hello guys welcome back to coding cafe so in the previous tutorial we have completed the sign up and we uh, successfully inserted the data and create account for all the users who is going to create new account now in this video we will allow user to sign in okay so let's go to the uh, visual studio and let's create a new form which will be our sign in form so first let's close all these okay and now let's add another form so add windows form and that this form name will be sign in now click add and this is our sign in form so now for the time saving i'm going to the sign up form and let's copy paste these three fields which is the sign up the password and this button so control c go to the sign in form and let's paste that here and now we will close the sign up okay and now let's change this for the sign in sign in and then our email we have to change this to txt email login just to differentiate okay and this one is our txt password login which means on our login page we have this text field txt password login and then button txt sign in sorry btn sign in okay and now let's also change this to sign in or if you want you can also give it any name there is let's say login and also here now whenever a user click on this login button we must get the text from here so double click on that and here we can say string email equals to txt email login dot text password login dot text and let's give it some proper name in order to differentiate so let's say user email user password so first we have to check that is the user must provide both of these if both of these fields are not empty so you can say user email dot equals to null if this is null we must uh, give a message please enter email and here we can say please enter password if the user enter uh, both of these then we must write a query for uh, allow the user to sign in so we can say a string query equals to here we can write the query so we have a table by the name user so we can say select all from users where email and here we need to provide our column name which is this one email and password okay so make sure to use the same name here otherwise it will not work so if this email is equals to here you need to type this single quotation and we need to pass the user email string here and then add this concatenation sign which is this plus okay and after that we have to complete our query also add a single quotation just to close this one single quotation okay which is this one and after it we can say and password equals to add this single quotation after this concatenation sign and we have to pass the value which is stored inside this variable then put to a quotation again and here first of all this concatenation sign this plus and add single quotation and after that we must put semicolon okay which is which we already wrote there okay so this is our query which will select all the users from the users table uh, where email is equals to this email which a user will type here on the sign in form and uh, we are checking for the password if the password is correct if both of these are correct then uh, we will allow the user to log in so let's execute our query first we need to uh, access our db access class here so we can say db object db access equals to new db access 
and here by using that object we can execute our query object db access dot read data through adapter and now i will explain this function what it will do okay inside our which is inside our db access so it needs two parameters the first one is the query and the second one is the data table in which we will be storing our uh, data from the database so let's create a data table here so we can say data table let's give it a name as dt users equals to new data table and let's pass this data table to it which is our temporary data table uh, which basically executes on the RAM I mean it stored the data on the RAM okay so if uh, we have to check if either if it is inserted if any record is inserted inside this DT user which we can get like DT rows DT dot rows dot count so if this become equals to one it means that a row is affected which means row is insert uh, I mean inserted inside this DT users data table then we have to display a message box to the user congratulations you are logged in successfully and by using the object of that class we we have to close that connection we are going to send the user to the home page so go to the sign up form and let's for the time saving i am going to copy this code which is this dot hide and home show Control C go to the sign in dot CS and here we can paste this else if any error occur then we are going to display this message error again try uh, I mean error occur try again now let me explain what how it will work so first we wrote a query okay which will check if this username and password is correct and if it is available in the database uh, I mean we are executing this by uh, using this read data through adapter query and data user data adapter is basically used to read the data from database sequentially okay line by line so if we go to the DB access then what this will do let me tell you this this is our read data through adapter function okay which is SQL data reader so data reader used to sequentially read data from a data source so here first of all we are checking for the connection if the connection is closed then we create the connection which will basically establish our connection which I already told you guys in the previous tutorial uh, for the sign up and if this is okay then this is our SQL connection and our query basically this uh, function uh, this function received two uh, parameters one is the query and one is the data table okay which we are passing here from this okay query and DT user and it will receive that and this is our SQL connection this is query which is command text uh, which is contain our select query and the command type is text and we are passing that command to it and we are filling our uh, data table which is here okay adapter.fill and this is the name of that data table here which this method receive as a parameter you can see this so we will be using this data table in the upcoming tutorials but for now we are just checking it for the sign in so before we run the app uh, go to the program.cs and let's here you can see application.run so our app starts from the sign up page so let's change this to sign in so now our app will start from the sign in so now let's run the app and test it if it is working or not so this is our login page now i'm going to provide my correct email and then password which is one two three four five six now let's log in it says congratulations you are logged in successfully if i click ok you can see i am on the home page now let's uh, enter the wrong data and test it for that if it uh, give us any error or not so i'm going to type let's say ali at the rate which is not available basically for now in the database let's say i'm going to type any password and then click login it says error occurred try again but in the login case we have to change this message and instead of that we can just say i mean this is not error we can say invalid credentials or you can say invalid uh, information provide 
correct email and password so yeah that's it now let's run once more time for the mr chips which is this one user okay so let's do that so we can say chips i see this is the yes this is chips at the red gmail.com login and here you can see congratulations you are logged in successfully so yeah that's it for this video and in the next video what we will be doing is that uh, we will display the information of the user who will log in into this app here on this home page and we will allow the user to edit update and delete information from i mean his uh, information from the database okay that is let's say if a user want to change his name email password or country and also if a user want to delete his account from the database that is the whole information so i will be working on that in the next video tutorial see you guys in the next video bye for now